Hello, my name is Soweto Kinch, jazz musician and MC, and this year's subject for consideration and creative stimulus is gentrification. It's obviously a very topical, very resonant subject, and so I've decided to wear a hipster hat and a hipster beard, especially for the subject. So what is gentrification? Wikipedia describes it as a trend in urban neighbourhoods which results in increased property values and the displacing of lower income families and small businesses. This is a common and controversial topic in urban planning. So that describes pretty accurately the process that I think a lot of us will be familiar with. But I would argue, and perhaps others with me, that gentrification embodies a lot more than that. It's a certain philosophy that's governed the city planning of recognisably large cities like London, Manchester and Birmingham. There are areas that we could look at with a particular style of architecture and go, that's been gentrified. Very often it's about airy, modern, jagged edge spaces that give the impression, the illusion of lightness and airiness and certainly superior design. You could also look at the phenomenon of the modern coffee shop. The success of places like Starbucks and Costas, but also more smaller independent retailers with this idea of good coffee that only the elites could, could understand and maybe the unwashed don't have the refined palate to appreciate. Finally, for anyone that's seen the most recent episodes of South Park, you probably shouldn't have seen the most recent episodes, but that's by the by, they deal with the subject of gentrification really interestingly, where they almost mock some of the political views that are supposed to accompany raising living standards. So there's this gentrified space sort of so far with people who are very politically correct, who always eat the healthiest food options and seem to be imbued with a, a politically, culturally superior view of the world that gentrification gives them. So we should consider not just the processes and descriptions of gentrification, but what's the impact of it across various sectors, housing, education, the economy. What are the practical results of the process of gentrification? And not just now, but in decades and years to come. So the impact of gentrification is probably most visible in terms of house prices. You don't need to be a statistician or work for the government to have seen a huge spike in house prices, particularly in the capital, over the past 10, 15 years. And a massive spike in house prices. This house rising thing keeps happening. And in March this year, the average national price of a house had risen to £308,151. That's the average cost of a house right across the country. Across South London, areas like Dulwich, parts of Peckham, are now becoming almost unaffordable to the, the inhabitants who've been there for 10, 15, 20 years before. A lot of people are, are buying second homes. There is a large buy to rent market. So the people who already have a large property portfolio, you can keep on acquiring them. And of course, that price is first time buyers out and overall drives the prices of first time or three, four bedroom houses up dramatically. Another massive factor is foreign investors or absentee landlords as others might see them. So this is not to dissuade people from Dubai, Qatar, India, China, America for investing in properties, but vast swathes, again, of the capital city are owned by foreign landlords or absentee landlords who don't live in them, simply are buying them almost to land bank them and watch prices spike so that they themselves can make a profit when they sell these properties on. This wouldn't be so pernicious if there wasn't a massive housing crisis in London and homelessness problems. It means that previously very ethnically diverse and class diverse areas like Labrick Grove, which was where I actually grew up with Moroccans, working class white people, a large West Indian community, uh, have changed dramatically over the past 10, 15, 20 years. And a lot of these communities have been pushed out to areas such as Dagenham, areas such as Mitcham and Sutton, places more on the margins of London. This naturally sparked some very angry, controversial and activist responses that you should be familiar with. The New Era Estate Campaign, which was led by single parents largely in this estate community in London, managed to overthrow, effectively, private Tory landlord interests. Successful African-American film director Spike Lee also had some very passionate words to say about gentrification where he lives in Brooklyn, but also how connected that was to gentrification that he sees in Brixton when he comes to London and visits. 
Interestingly, the subject of race is almost one that you can't extricate, you can't take away from that gentrification. These terms come around and disappear and gain fashion, but unfortunately the idea of moving away from people who don't look like you is very embedded here in England and has a very long trajectory, of course, in the United States. So, should this displacement of large communities of black, brown and poor white communities to the fringes of London or the other peripheries across the country, should that be considered a form of ethnic cleansing or just the natural improvement, the evolutions that should take place in a city as it improves and if different people move in and old people move out? So I grew up in an area of London, Labrick Grove, but often visited Brixton where my mum still res resides today. And what always struck me about Brixton, it was a place where 20, 25 years ago, you could often find squats. You could find a lot of white dreadlocked people with funny dyed dreadlocks living alongside passionate, very yardy Jamaican people. It was an area in which white and black lived cheek by jowl. And that always defined it, even more so than areas like Labour Grove that I grew up in. The change that's most alarming and confronts Brixtonians today is that there are new spaces such as Brixton Village, um, such as various art galleries within it, that suddenly feel like almost middle class white space only. First time we have a very racially stratified Brixton in which there's a soup kitchen reality for poor, usually black or white working class families on the one hand, and an entire different experience of champagne and fromage for an upper middle class or upwardly mobile set of people benefiting from gentrification. So finally, speaking as a jazz musician, it's good to consider what's going to be the impact of gentrification on art, on the creative process. So this process of ghettoization and of course gentrifying art is nothing new. It goes way back to the 19th century and the idea of an elite almost reclaiming control of an art form from the unwashed and illiberal working class masses. What kind of plays are going to be written? What kind of operas could be commissioned? What kind of albums are going to come out of an area where previously there was diversity, but now things are more homogenous? Now things are all very upper middle class. All things look, feel and sound the same. What will be the impact of that on the creation of art?